This interview is part of the Living Legends Collection of the Oklahoma Historical Society. It is an interview with Mr. Hal Baldenhammer, interviewed on April 9, 1971, by Pendleton Woods. It is being copied for inclusion in the permanent collection of the Oral History Program on March 12, 1990, by Joel Todd. This is Penn Woods interviewing for the Oklahoma Living Legends. We are in Clinton, Oklahoma on Good Friday of 1971, and I'm visiting in the offices of the Clinton Daily News with Mr. Hal Bodenhammer, who came to what is now Clinton in 1900, and who I understand has the longest record of continuously being in the same business uh, in uh, the city of Clinton. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bodenhammer's last name is spelled B-O-D-E-N-H-A-M-E-R, is that correct? Uh, to begin with, why don't you tell us uh, where you came from originally, who your parents were, and what brought them to Oklahoma? Well, we came here in 1900. I'm from in near Springfield, Missouri, a little town named Fairgrove. Your father's name, your father's name is My father's name is Jacob Bodenhammer, and my mother's name is Eliza Bodenhammer. And they both passed away. My father died when I was four years old and uh, mother died in 37. <clears throat> go ahead and tell about uh, why, uh, why did they come, decide to come to Oklahoma? Well, the, the reason we came to Oklahoma, my mother's uh, cousins had came out here and they wrote back uh, glowing experiences that they had had out here. My father was dead. My brother and sister and me and mother were all there was in our family. And then my uncle and his folks were living with us, so we all came to this country in August in 1900. And we uh, originally came here to, down to the Snyder Settlement. They had came out here about two years before we had, and they moved down on the river, which was known as the Snyder Settlement. And they lived down there in the dugout, and we just continued to live in our covered wagons for that fall and winter. And then the next... Uh, Spring, we leased, uh, rented a farm out here where the Clinton Airport is now. We rented that farm where the, where it is now. And then we farmed, uh, moved down on Turtle Creek and farmed there for a couple of years. And then I moved to Clinton and went to work in the grocery stores. And there's a little incident happened while we lived out on the creek. It might interest people. We. Uh, we had a cloudburst out there. We lived in a one-room house right on the uh, banks of the creek. And one evening, we, uh, about dark, there was a big cloudburst about um, two miles north of us. And uh, some people by the name of Flinner, there were seven in the family and six of them drowned. But by the time it got down to where we was at, it had spread out to where we could wade out and get up on the high hill that's about a half a mile from us. And we got out there and we made it safe, good shape. Hello, Jake. Come on. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this cloud burst, uh, the, uh, were you still in, were you all still living in the covered wagon at that time? No, we were living in one room house. Uh -huh. In, in the same Snyder area. No, it wasn't in the it wasn't in the Snyder area. It was it was uh, uh, two mile east of town and a mile north where we lived then. Uh huh. Or shall I just go on? Yes, let's go ahead from there. So we uh, went up to the Indian house up there on the hill, my brother, and we had uh, two neighbor girls visiting us with us that night, and we went in and broke into this Indian house. There wasn't anybody home. Of course, we was all wet. And the girls broke open an Indian trunk there and got them some squaw dresses and dressed up the squaw dresses for the rest of the night. And the next morning, about 10 o'clock, while the people began to come up from the Snyder settlement, it was, they knew we were in trouble up there. There was so much water went down the river. So uh, they come up, come up in there to see if they could help people. And one fellow by the name Ed Cook, big farmer down that is, he was a big man. And I'd hurt my leg and I couldn't walk. And he carried me to Clinton. We had to go about three miles north to 
cross on the railroad covered, and then he carried me all the way to Clinton on his back. And uh, how old were you then? I was about uh, 12 years old, 13. I guess I was 13 then. The uh, backtracking a little bit, could you tell about any experiences that happened on your covered wagon trip down here? Well, there's really not anything unusual. My aunt, the buggy turned over with her one time and threw her out of the buggy, and she fainted, but there wasn't no serious injuries or anything. And my uncle and his wife and then my mother, they were the older people, and us children, we all had a real good time. We were three weeks on the road, and uh, we really enjoyed ourselves. And we got into Rappo on the 23rd of August, stayed all night up there in the wagon yard, and then next morning we went down to Snyder Settlement. And then, then we stayed there that winter. What kind of roads or paths did you have to get here? Well, we had uh, fair roads most of the time. After we got to uh, into Oklahoma, we just had trails, but in Missouri, we had good roads. Up around Miami, they'd put that chat on the roads, and we made good time. The, uh, now, now, this town, Clinton, was established about 1903. Right. And you were, uh, so you were one of the very early inhabitants of Clinton. Why don't you tell a little about the establishment of Clinton? How did Clinton come about? Well, there was a couple of fellows here named the Lamb and Nance. They, uh, Rappo was north of us, which you know is four miles north. But they decided they wanted to open up a town site in Clinton which they did, and uh, had a big opening day here and sold, I think, about $25,000 worth of lots the first day. They bought this uh, lot from a in this, uh, that the town site is on now, they bought the sec uh, quarter section from an Indian. And uh, the, uh, about the first thing we had in Clinton was a saloon. At one time here, we had 11 saloons and one grocery store. That is the first thing that come moved into Clinton was a saloon from out at Parkersburg, a little town about three miles west of town. And then later on, that building was moved to Clinton. And just in the last 30 days, it's been torn down. They're putting up a brick building there now. When did you come to Clinton? Well, after I... I moved in, made it my, really my home after about, a, let's see, long in, uh, about eight, 19 and 8. 19. That's, that's when I went to work in the grocery stores. I understood that they had some kind of a big celebration to celebrate uh, uh, Clinton, the beginning of Clinton and a balloon ascension and such. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Tell us <coughs> about that. that. Tell us about anything about that celebration you remember. Well, it was just a big celebration. It wasn't really, there wasn't a lot to it, only just the, everybody gathered down in the park on the river and just had a big, really a good time. And I don't remember too much about the balloon ascension, but I do remember that we had one here, but I don't remember too much about it. Do you remember anything else that took place during that uh, celebration? Well, no, I really don't. What the early events that took place uh, during your first three or four years here do you recall besides the flood as being uh, particularly memorable? Well, I really don't know of anything that is really particularly memorable. Did you because have any, uh, any uh, occasions with the Indians that might have been particularly interesting? Well, the only thing I know, I was afraid of the Indians. I, I was really afraid of them when we come to this country. And it was a little funny incident happened when we leased this lease out here on the Turtle Creek, when we moved from the uh, airport site where the airport is now. Why, we went down there in the fall before we moved on the lease to get some wood, which we wasn't supposed to do, but we went down there and this old Indian came down from the house and he was real mad. And Turtle Creek then was running full. It was deep, about waist deep or more. And this Indian come up on the other side of where we was at, and he was mad. He was a cursing. And uh, he uh, 
jumped, started to jump across the creek and fell in. And as long in December, and the creek was about half froze over with ice. And you talk about a bad Indian, he was really mad. <laughs> <laughs> what was the relationship uh, between the Indians in the area and the uh, white settlers that moved in? Well, it was good, I think. I think the relationship was good. The, uh, in, the, in the very earliest days, and you came here in, in 1908, do you recall any of the, let's see, in 1903, now you were about seven years old, is that correct? When you well, I was 10 years old when we came to Clinton, yes, I was. Came, mm -hmm. you came to Clinton. Yes, 10 years uh, old. The, uh, what are the things in the very earliest days you remember in Clinton? What are some of the instances experiences of the town that you can recall in 30 days? Well, uh, really, I don't know, don't recall any really anything out of the usual. We had every, every year we'd have a big 4th of July celebration and then everybody would come. And, uh, but I really don't remember anything. It's Where was it held? Yeah. Where was the 4th of July celebration held and what happened in those? Well, it was down on what is called the Nance Park. After Clinton started, they had a park down here. It's called Nance Park, and that's where they had all the celebrations. The, uh, uh, what, did, what all took place at this celebration? Oh, they had uh, uh, sack races, potato races, firecrackers, and lemonade, and bananas. And really had a good time. Would you, was the 4th of July speech a part of the celebration? Yes, and William Jennings Bryan was at one of those uh, celebrations. I remember him well. Tell about his trip, yeah. Well, I don't remember much about it, only I just know he was here. And I know he was a, a great orator. We all liked him. I forget, I don't know what, whether he was running for president then or what he was running for. But he was a big, big man, big husky, good looking. Do you recall anything about his speech? No, I don't. I just don't recall anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I suspect that his being here drew a crowd from out of town. Well, I'm uh, sure it did, yes. The, uh, uh, can you recall any of the other Fourth of July celebrations that you feel are particular uh, interest? Well, no, nothing, just the celebration. All I remember about them, I don't remember any incidents that really happened. What about the school? Can you tell uh, what school you attended and something about, uh, something about the school? Well, I attended school uh, right on the next street here, next street east, and then across the street from the post office and a two-room schoolhouse. And I was a janitor there. I made five dollars a month janitoring. And uh, my brother and me, the next year went to Mexico and I had ten dollars that I was going to have for expenses on that trip and I lost my ten dollars. But I didn't have any money. My brother had to finance me. <laughs> you still made it to Mexico? I made it to Mexico, all right. Do you recall uh the, anything about the classrooms or about any of the teachers, anything that might be particularly memorable during your, uh, during your school of art there? Well, I had a, the first school teacher I had was a large lady. She was, wasn't fat, she was husky lady, and her name was Cox. And then she uh, left, and then another Miss Cox came and taught school. And uh, later on, she married Dr. McBurney here in town. She married a Dr. McBurney. And this schoolhouse was a two-room schoolhouse. We had two teachers, one in one room and one in the other. How many grades in each, in each room? How many uh, levels of grades? Well, up to sixth grade. Mm -hmm. the, um, do you recall in your high school, junior or senior high school, do you recall any uh, particular memorable events? Well, I never did make high school. You did not make school. No, I never what made about, high school. Uh, uh, what about the athletic events that took place here during the early years? Did you have any, uh, what, what teams did, uh, did Clinton have? Well, they didn't have any in those days. The only thing we had to 
play around the schoolhouse was uh, was uh, shinny. I, I believe that's what it's called, shinny. You'd get out and kick tin cans around so many on one, kind of like football, only just tick, kick tin cans around. And you'd really get skinned up with those. <laughs> Can yeah, I guess that's what it was. Uh, you, did you have any, you didn't have a, a town baseball team or anything like that? Well, later on, yes, we had a town baseball team and had a real good team. That is, oh, that is seven or eight years later. And we had a real good team. I remember one time we was playing El Reno and it run up to 18 innings and had to call it on the count of darkness. Chickasha and El Reno and some other town was in this circuit, but I don't remember what other town it was. Remember what the Clinton team was called? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you remember any uh, specific games or any specific incidents that took place dealing with the baseball team? Well, that's the only game that I really, really remember yet. For I was pretty busy working, I didn't get to go to many of them. Why don't you talk about your first job other than janitoring at the school? Well, there wasn't very much to it. I just uh, sweep out the two rooms and uh, then make the fires of the morning. That was just about all there was to it. It'd take me, oh, about an hour to sweep the two rooms out, and then I'd get down there about 7.30 in the morning, 8, and get rooms good and warm. What were you burning? Wood. The... Uh what was your first job after you left school? Well, my first job was working in the grocery store, Henry Lacey's grocery store. And uh, he, uh, Tom Lingenfeller was running for him. And uh, Tom Lingenfeller was the father of our Dr. Lingenfeller here in town now. And my mother was with... Uh, with his mother when Tom was born, when Dr. Lingenfelder was born. She was with him when uh, Dr. Lingenfelder was born. The, uh, why don't you describe the grocery store of that day? Well, it was, they didn't wait on their sales like they do now. We had to put up everything in bags. We had to sack potatoes, we sack beans, we stack sugar. The fact is, we sacked everything, and they had a few canned goods on the shelves, but not too many. And we had uh, sauerkraut in 50-gallon barrels. We'd sell sauerkraut for the pound, and big hoops of cheese. We'd fill them on the nickels worth of cheese. Well, we'd turn them off nickels worth of cheese, and it was just uh, a good time then. To Saturdays was our big days. Everybody would come to town. We were really busy on Saturdays. They'd bring their eggs and butter in, and we had to take care of that. And it was really a busy place. Did you have the wagon markets in town on Saturdays? No, didn't have any wagon markets. Now, we delivered groceries here in town. We'd later <laughs> on, later on. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean? No, I meant did. Uh, uh, did the farmers come in with wagon markets uh, uh, on Saturday as they did in some time? Well, they came in, but I don't think they ever... You mean sell stuff? Yes, you know, I, I don't believe they ever did. I don't remember it if they did. But uh, farmers really come to town. And I know I can remember the circuses that come to town. That is quite an event. Why don't you tell us about it? And uh, long about 11 o'clock... Uh, of the morning where they'd have a parade. They'd come down Main Street and there'd be a man in front of the parade hollering, hold your horses, hold your horses. And then the steam calliope would come down and believe me, they had to hold their horses. <laughs> the horses were just on each side of the wagon. <laughs> it was really something. Now, I, and it, it was interesting, really interesting. You remember who the circus it was? Ringland Brothers, that was the main one, that was the big one. Then Barnum and Bailey came. Was, every year some circus would come to town. What, uh, other than the circus, what was the big event that would come to town? Well, 
I really don't know if any big events would come. During the period you were working in the grocery store, what were some of the other principal businesses of Clinton that? Well, the dry goods stores. You remember the names of any of them? Well, let's see. Well, J.D. Simpson was one. And Brian, no, yeah, Brian, Brian store. That was a dry goods store. But there wasn't too many of them here for a good many years. They just. What was the first industry or plant here? CBNR, wholesale grocery. Mm -hmm. uh, tough. Can you tell us anything about that? Well, it it is quite a it is quite a big plant. They had a good many people employed, and uh, the building still is here on East Choctaw, and the Lynn Company's in it now. And then later on, we had uh, Turner Produce, and then Swift and Company, and some other big company had uh, plants here. Bought chickens and eggs and kittle chickens. They were they were big. They'd work about forty or fifty women. Each plant worked about forty or fifty women. What now, areas would they sell? Well, they'd just uh, they'd ship to New York mostly. They'd buy these chickens and ship them carlo to New York. The uh, what about the cottonseed oil plant? Well, uh, cotton. Well, it was it was built here in about nineteen and six, I believe it was. And Can you tell us about it. Well, and I can't tell too much about it. They'd, I know they had it almost completed, and the cyclone come along and tore it, blow it almost completely destroyed it. Before it got in operation. Before it got in operation, and then I have a picture of, a, of my our family and my uncle's family and the foreman and, and his two boys that uh, built the oil mill here. The um, what? Uh, is that building still up? Yes, it's still here. Still it's still up. operating. Yes, sir. Operating big. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, who were some of the leaders that you recall in your earliest years here? Who, who were some of the people who were the leaders of uh, the community at that time? Well, W.A.J. Cock. Can you tell who they were? Well, he was a banker. He was in Oklahoma National Bank, and uh, Tom Nance. He was a banker, and Clint Strong, he, he uh, I guess you might say, financed the c and Railroad, which is now the Santa Fe Road, went from here to Strong City, which is, it's, it's, they don't do any business over it at all now, just have one train a week. But then it, they were just busy all the time, lots of business. Can you talk about the passenger railroad? Any, any of the things you remember? Any instances of? Well, I know I, I used to ride the passenger train a lot. I thought that was the biggest thrill in the world of riding the passenger train. And whenever you'd go anywhere on the passenger train, they were always crowded. Sometimes you had to ride the steps. I'd go to Elk City and Weatherford and different towns around here, and then I always thought that was about the nicest thing there was to ride the train. But they'd have long trains, and they're just crowded always. When did uh, what did you do after you left the grocery store? Well, I went into transfer business. I stayed in the grocery business till about eighteen, well, till eighteen, and then I went into transfer business. Uh, had you, uh, by the no, were you in the grocery business about ten years almost? Yeah, I worked. Yes, Did you sir. get into your own business? No, I just I just was a clerk, just a work clerk, yes, sir. I see. And uh, in the transfer business, what did you go into there? What did you do there? Well, it was just, uh, we bought hides and coal, sold coal, and was in the uh, breeding business. We had two stallions. We had a wagon yard, and we'd take care of the farmers when they come to town. People going through the country, they'd stay all night with us, drive their wagons inside the building. Stay all night with us, we'd make a small charge on it. And usually sell them a little feed. And then later on, of course, we quit everything but the transfer business. 
Were you, uh, was this your own business or in, uh, you know, were you part of this business? Well, I was, uh, had a partner for about three years, and then I bought him out. Mm -hmm. I've been it myself ever, by myself ever since. Mm -hmm. uh, you're still in that business? I'm still in the business, yes, sir. The, um, <coughs> now this was about 1918. Why don't we think about the World War I period, and why don't you, uh, uh, why don't you discuss Clinton, as you recall it, just before World War One? What was it like? Well, it was it was a it was a good little town. It was just a real good little town. And uh, I remember, I uh, I didn't go to I missed going to the service, and I've always felt bad about it. But it just wasn't my fault. I I was called up to go. In the week, I had they had called them then, they called call to go, and I had they had called me in in one week where I was going, getting ready to go, and then the, they made peace over there, which I was very glad. I never did really want to go. The only time I really wanted to go was one Saturday. The news came in that the Germans were shelling Paris with Big Bertha ever so many hours, where they drop a big shell over there, and boy, I was high behind. I wanted to go in that war. What was uh, Clinton like? Uh, what were the businesses at that time in Clinton? Well, they are uh, just grocery stores and uh, dry goods stores. There wasn't any industries here, only those uh, produce houses, that's about all. Do you recall at this time any of the uh, particular leaders uh, of the community, either business or, uh, or other areas of education or, uh, or uh, institutions that were particularly memorable to you at this period? No, I can't. I can't recall any uh, of them. Uh, what about the paving of the streets? When did this begin? Well, the best of my knowledge is in 27. Can you tell us what it was like before the streets and after the streets were paved about that uh, experience? Well, it was, they were real bad. Main Street was kind of a sandy street, and uh, we had to haul freight from the... Uh, railroad which they're on the east side of the town and we had to come up that street with the freight on wagons and it was pretty rough going it was real rough what is the first automobile you ever saw in Clinton? well the first automobile I, my brother-in-law bought a ford he was a plumber here and he went him i went to oklahoma city with him and he bought a ford give 800 and some dollars for it and it didn't have any top on it and had this uh, windshield, those brass fixtures on the windshield, and you steered on the right side, and had pressed pressed on lights. Now that's the that's the first automobile to come to Clinton. Did it attract a great deal of attention? Better? Yes, it did. It attracted a lot of attention. And the big trouble with cars then, uh, if you went to the country, you'd get hung on a high center. And when you got, if you was going down the road about 15 miles an hour and hit those high centers and you slid slid on it, you had a rough time getting off of it. Your wheels would all be off the ground. <laughs> As you go along, uh, uh, any, anything that you think of, just cut right in and ask you. And particular, any, uh, any particular stories or incidents that, uh, that you have heard told that you think would be of interest, uh, yeah. Just cut in and say, be sure to tell about this because it's easy for me uh, working it's cold to miss some of these. Uh, the uh, uh, after World War One, what uh, uh, what were the highlight events that you can recall that took place during the 1920s in uh, in Clinton? Well, really, the highlights were the boys coming home. That was what I'd call the highlights of it. Were there any celebrations? There? Yes, they celebrated. Do you recall? Uh, do you recall any national personalities who came to Clinton, other than William Jennings Bryan, during your earlier days? No, I sure don't. Uh, do you recall any uh, uh, any particular events? Uh, well, let's take uh, let's take fires, cyclones, and that sort of thing. Can you recall any disasters that may have taken place uh, in Clinton while you were here in the earlier days? Well, we had uh, several cyclones that would 
would uh, hit around the outskirts of Clinton. One or two would come just hit part of Clinton. But uh, one of the, the worst cyclones we had, I guess, was down here at uh, uh, Mountain, no, not Mountain Park. What is that, James? Right south of Mountain Park. Snyder. Oh, Snyder. Snyder. Mountain View. Uh, Mountain Snyder, yeah. That was a real bad one. Killed, I don't know, a lot of people. And then Butler had a real bad one in the early day here. The, uh, do you recall any, or have you had any major uh, disastrous fires in Texas? Well, yes, we've had some, some big fires, but I don't think anybody ever got killed, but the Grace Hotel, Hotel where the Calumet is now, but the Grace Hotel, Hotel where the Calumet is now, it burned up. Okay. Uh, well, that was long in, uh, about the long the 20s, 21, and it was a real far. My uh, livery barn was in wagon yard and transfer all was right down there just east of it, and it was, it was a big far. Did this hotel ever rebuild? Yes, it's the Calumet now. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, can you tell, uh, during the 20s, uh, during that period, who were some of the leading personalities that uh, you knew in town? Leading citizens? Well, Claude Calumet was one. Who was he? Can you tell you? Well, he, uh, he run the Calumet Hotel for a good long while. He was a big rancher and stock owner here. And uh, I just can't remember really much about that. Are you a member of the Chamber of Commerce or were you doing these periods? Yes, I'm a member, yes. Uh, what, uh, when was the Chamber of Commerce organized? Gosh, I, that's a question I wouldn't want to try to answer. I don't uh, know. It's been a long any, time. Can you recall any of the uh, uh, particular events or situations promoted by uh, either the chamber or by other organizations that were from uh, uh, some of the major promotional efforts made by the city? No, I really can't. The, uh, uh, you, you don't recall the, uh, Were there any, uh, during the, th the 20s and 30s, were there any major uh, events in the community that ought to be mentioned? Can you think of it? Well, during the 20s is when they started the paving here. I don't know whether you'd call that a major event or not. They paved Main Street and uh, all the streets to 11th Street. Mm -hmm. And we really thought that was something, to have our streets paved, and which it, it was really nice. When did they start down Clinton Lake? Clinton Lake, well, that is long in, that is about 30, long the 30s. Maybe, maybe the last of the 20s, probably was about the last of the 20s built that lake. In your storage and moving business and the various other early businesses that you had, what the, can you think of any interesting, uh, situations or experiences in that business that rose up that might be worth mentioning. Funny things that might have happened dealing with your operation of your business. Well, no, I can't, don't recollect anything. Mm -hmm. The, uh, do you recollect any, uh, uh, what about the growth of your, your schools in, uh, in Clinton? Can you think of anything uh, in that? Have you had any relationship with that over the years? Well, no, not really. I know it's been a big growth, I know that. In the, uh, in the business area, can you think of anything in particular there? How about St. Sherman Air Force Base? When did it? Did you have any involvement at all in that area? Well, we nothing only we done lots of work out there. The uh, Navy had it first before the Air Force had it. In World War Two, or the Navy had it out there, and then later on they left, and then the Air Force moved in, then took over. 
course, they are gone now. They've been gone a little over a year. They moved out about a year ago. That is a, that is a disaster to us transfer people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what would uh, what would you say was a highlight event in this area during the uh, uh, during the nineteen? Do you, do you recall any highlight events that occurred during the nineteen twenties or during the nineteen thirties? It would be worth seeing. Well, I don't really remember anything. Do you think of anything that you might want to recall? The white island. You want to do that? Um, the. Uh, oh, we had that big ham and flood, you know, a Washita flood in the early 30s, wasn't it? In the middle 30s. Tell about that flood. Well, that's in 37. Can you tell about I, it? Yes, I can tell you something about it. Uh, it rained all one afternoon, just a uh, red downpour, and uh, the two school children got drowned. The bus was taking them home, and they had to cross the river bottom out here, and the bus got stranded out there, and two of the children got out of the bus and tried to make it back, but they drowned. And uh, it rained from about uh, 2 o'clock till about 7, and by 8 o'clock that night, the Warsaw River was all out over the bottom. It's just a big, wide river everywhere. The, um, can you recall any other event during the 30s that was uh, particularly memorable, such as that? Well, I can remember the uh, Dust Bowl days. Tell about it. <laughs> Well, that is pretty rough, I'll tell you. That Dust Bowl days, we really had... It was rough here. And uh, people was on the WPAs and just any way they could to make a living. I, uh, I stayed with the business, but I didn't have any business. But uh, I did manage to make it till after things began to get a little better and things seemed like since then have just been getting better all the time. Well, can you describe the dust storm, uh, the, uh, the biggest dust storm you remember? Well, really the worst one I remember is one Sunday afternoon. And it come up a black, real black cloud, that is, it seemed to be a cloud in the northwest. And it just looked like it was going to come a flood. And when the wind, it, the wind had whipped to the north, and when it come blowing that in, it wasn't nothing but dust. It was, you just couldn't see anything. The, and the, the dust would settle in your homes. It was kind of a white dust coming out of Colorado, I guess. And the dust would just settle in your homes. It was ever, just all your furniture every morning would just be covered with that dust where it would settle. It seems like the night while the dust had settled, the wind would die down. And things would just be covered every morning with dust. And then the next day, the winds would come up again. Did you lose many people to California during this period? Did you know somebody did? Well, yes, we did. We lost a lot of people. It just, it looked like for a while there that all people, uh, they're all going to move out of Clinton and all of the surrounding places around here. We had homes to rent here, just dozens of them. And then the World War II started, and these places just filled up overnight. I don't know how it done it, but it just seemed like almost overnight. Mm -hmm. The uh, during the 1940s, of course, these are the war years. Uh, what, what can you? Uh, when did Clinton Sherman Air Force? Uh, when, when did that base first open? Its predecessor. Well, the the Navy opened there in '42. That's when they built this place out here. When the Navy had it. And then I don't know just how long they did activate it. Activated, do you, James? About 56, I believe, when the Air Force. Air Force came in, yeah. Can you recall any events of the Navy base that would be worth mentioning? Do you think that occurred? Well, the only thing I can recall that they they done a good job of building that. It was a bad winter and snow. And they worked out there during the snow and the cold weather, and they built, they just never stopped. Just never stopped. 
the uh, do you recall in the uh, 1940s during the war years any events that took place in uh, Clinton that ought to be mentioned? Well, no, I really don't remember anything. Can you think of anything? I just know that Clinton was well they made in town. It looked like San Diego as many sailors and they run bus service all over town. Mm -hmm. The streets were just crowded and they had the USO club. How many sailors were here? Did you have any idea? Well, there's around 2,000, I believe, is what they had here. I wonder why they selected this area for a Navy base. I don't know. That's that's always been a mystery to well, us. Well, it was technical training that they received. I just know that. It was just a, it was a training base is what it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you have any other thoughts that we ought to, you think that we ought to record that we haven't? Well, I really don't know of any. Who would you say over the period of uh, all the years that you've been in Clinton are to you maybe the one or two most memorable people uh, that you feel played the key role in the development of this community? Well, Clint Strong and Jack Lamb were two of the uh, town boosters, I remember that. They were really boosters for Clinton in the early days. Neither living now? No, neither living now. Can you think of any others? Uh, not not necessarily just in the early days, but over the years, can you think of any others who played a significant role in uh, Clinton? No, I really can't. Do you have any other thoughts there? This has uh, been an interview with uh, Mr. Hal Bodenhammer of uh, Clinton being made on Good Friday of 1971 in the offices of the Clinton Daily News.